Hello. In this presentation, I will be showing you how to use RISA2D to do a response spectrum analysis. As you can see here, I have the model from last time, the shear building, that we solved several lessons ago. I've got the frequencies and periods solved, and then the mode shapes, just as we did last time. Of course, the goal with the response spectrum analysis is we want to look at how will this, how will this structure respond to an earthquake and typically the type of information we're, we're interested in finding is what are the maximum displacements from the earthquake and what are the member forces and things like that. So in order to do the response spectrum analysis the first thing we have to do is we're going to solve the building here. So I click on the solve button. Go down here to response spectra analysis. Solve it. And now I have a lot of parameters that I need to fill in here. First of all it's the spectrum to be used and let's use the El Centro, the 1940 earthquake. For modes, we'll go ahead and use them all. Um, it'll be in the X direction. The signage, not too concerned about that. Um, we can just leave it at none. This combination method, this basically tells Risa how to combine the responses from the different modes. And CQC, that's a good default. Um, your, your textbook has more information about that. For the damping ratio, since this is a steel building, we'll use 2% damping. That's a fairly accurate estimate. So now we start the solution. And it doesn't look like much has happened, but one thing that has happened is that these participation factors have been filled in. If you, if you open that up a little bit more, you can see that this is the SX participation, so the seismic and the X direction participation factors. And one way to interpret these is essentially they tell you which modes really dominate the response of the structure. So in this case, you can see that the first mode, and you, and you can read these as percentages, the first mode has about 91% of the response. It's, it, it's responsible for 91% of the total response of the structure. The second mode, about 7.5%, and the third mode, a little more than 1%. So you know, one thing to look at this and to take away from this is that the first and second modes, with the first and second modes, you're probably going to get about 99% of the total response. So strictly speaking, maybe I don't really even need to do the third mode. Of course, now this is a simple model, and so doing the calculations with all three modes, it's not a big deal. But it's certainly possible that in a real structure, you could have hundreds of modes. And that may be difficult. That may take a long time to compute and to do you know, the eigenvalue and eigenvector analysis. That may be difficult numerically. So one thing you can do is you can use fewer modes, and then if you check the participation factors, that will tell you, you know, how close you're going to be. If let's say you have 100 modes in a structure and you decide to use 10 of them and you go back and look at the participation factors and with the 10 modes you're getting maybe 99.5% of the response, you're probably okay truncating the modes and just using the 10 modes like that. So now the next thing we need to do is, so we've done the response spectrum analysis, I need to get that in terms of forces and deflections on the building itself. So the way we do this, if you go back into load combinations, we're going to add another load combination, so I hit enter here, and I'll call this the seismic load combination. And if you come over here to the basic load case and you click on the little arrow, we're going to do an SX. That's going to be our basic load case, the X direction response vector results. And for the factor, we'll do one here. We're not, we're not going to factor the seismic response at all. We'll use the full response in our solution. Okay, so we do that. Next, we do the solution. Now we go back to the very top here. We're going to do a single combination. And I'm going to select that load case, that load combination there, the seismic. So now when I solve it, okay, everything disappears. But if you look, we have a lot more results here. And in particular, I can look at, say, the joint reactions. So these are the reactions that I would have down here at the base of the structure based on that earthquake. This is the maximum force I would expect to see in these reactions based on the El Centro earthquake. So one thing in particular that I might look at here is the extraction reactions. If you look, I have about 80 kip at each base of the, of the structure, or a total of 160 kip. That right there is the base shear, right? The sum of all those extraction reactions is the base shear, which is something that is typically used in a seismic analysis. Another thing that's, that's important are the joint deflections. So if I click on the joint deflections here, so looking at these deflections, you can see, of course, we have zero at the base. And then the deflections increase as you go up to the roof to about two inches up at the roof. This information, of course, is really important for serviceability issues. 
We want to make sure there's not too much deflection where we're going to cause damage to the cladding on the exterior of the building. Or we could cause damage to interior non-structural elements as well. That's what we're concerned about. If you're looking at story drift, you can just subtract the you can subtract the deflection at one story from the one from the story below. So for instance, the story drift at the first floor is 0.9 inches. You can see on the second floor we're going from 0.9 to 1.6, so about 0.7 inches is what the story drift is there, etc. And then lastly, you can also look at the member forces. Okay, so member one, these were the columns. You can see the maximum axial load based on the earthquake, the maximum shear, and the maximum moment. So I can see what kind of forces the earthquake is generating in the building. I get down here at the bottom. These were the beams, and you can see there's no axial load, but there is some shear and there is some moment being generated in the beams based on the earthquake. So this concludes the video. This should help you get the homework done pretty easily. And hopefully you'll be able to explore some of the other capabilities of RISA in doing seismic analysis.